Hey guys, and welcome back to the Called to Lead podcast. So this episode is coming in a couple of days early as we are about to head into the Thanksgiving holiday and the Black Friday craziness. And I wanted to hop on and just give you one more reminder that if you're listening to this while you're traveling, that today is the last day to enroll in the Replicate Your Results course slash coaching program. That is just going to be so awesome. And we've spent the last few episodes kind of working through what it looks like, maybe some questions you might have, some examples of some of the ladies who have walked through it before. And so hopefully you have gotten all the information that you need. And now the time is, my friends, to dive in. And by midnight tonight, you can head over to replicateyourresults.com to enroll as we are going to start the live trainings on Monday the 28th. And don't worry if you can't catch those live. They will live on in a course format for you to watch and use and leverage forever. So definitely take advantage of that. If you are listening to this after the fact, you can still head on over to replicateyourresults.com to get on the waiting list for when we roll this out again. Or you can go to dolessearnmore.com to check out a free workshop that will help you determine the biggest thing that's holding you back in your business. So let's get into today's episode where I interview one of my sisters in my network marketing business who really just touches on what it looks like to truly have freedom in your business that isn't dependent on your rank, that isn't dependent on becoming some online influencer or selling some crazy amount of product in your business. And Carly and I talked through probably some of the things that are tugging at your heart right now in your business. And so you're really going to love hearing her story. And she's going to be giving you a little comparison for those of you guys who are trying to spend your energy going viral on Instagram or TikTok. You're really going to love what she has to say today. So Carly's built an incredible business. She's in the top like 0.2% of our company. (laughs) And she is just a doll. So I can't wait for y'all to hear her story. And let's dive into the interview. Yay. Are you dreaming of making a long-term income and impact beyond your own efforts, but feel like you're struggling to replicate your results? I'm Heather, a former burned out boutique owner turned top network marketing leader. And I've learned the hard way that you don't have to do all the things all on your own. Now, my passion is helping social sellers scale their business by choosing faith over fear and using simple duplicatable systems without having to sell your soul to social media. I'm so excited to share with you simple tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your business to the next level. In each episode, I'll share faith-focused wisdom, proven systems that your team can duplicate, and inspiring stories from other leaders who have been right where you are today. Are you ready to grow your team, find joy and fulfillment, and feel free? Break out your favorite pen and notebook, and let's dive in. Yay, friends. I am seriously so excited for you guys to meet a dear special friend of mine today who is so inspiring to me in the way that she runs her business on such a solid foundation of the right priorities and strong in her faith, but yet she runs an amazing business. So she's built a top less than 1% business within our company, but we're not on the same team. Her name's Miss Carly Johnson. She's my saint sister. And I'm really excited for her to not only share a little bit of her story and her journey of what, let's see, is it five years? I think she'll tell you that this, but five years in business has looked like for her and also share a little gold nugget of wisdom that she shared with on a training that I recently attended of hers that I was like, okay, this is gold and everybody on the podcast absolutely needs to hear it. So Carly, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story and a little bit of golden nuggets with us today. You are so welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I just adore Heather so much and I love learning from her. So it's like an honor to be, I guess, invited to even share this platform with you for a minute. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my my pleasure. And ditto, I have learned so much from you. And we'll probably, we'll have to share a couple of our little stories of how we've worked together over our, our years together here at Saint. But let's go backwards a bit and Tell us about your journey within network marketing and how you got started, your family, where you're from, like just paint the picture for us. Okay. So I grew up in a small town in Southern Oregon, went to college, got married, did all the things, 
And the first time I said yes to network marketing was when my husband was in law school. And if anybody has done like a, a postgraduate studies course, they're very expensive. They're very time consuming. You're pretty much broke as a joke for several years. And humility will open a lot of doors that pride would have kept closed in your previous life or a different stage of life. So I was in the prime stage of life to be humble enough to say yes to something. So the company that I'm with now, which I'm sure all of your listeners know is Saint because they follow you, was not my first company, actually. I had I had the first marriage and it was very brief. I think we didn't even, it was probably annulled, not even a true divorce. It was so brief, but I did one company for a hot second and I actually really loved the the message behind it and kind of the products and the platform of that company, but it wasn't the right fit for me. It was very hard to sell. It was in, and not to bash any particular industry, but this one was just hard for me. It was kind of like a health and wellness. And I was like, how do I reach out to people and like tell them they need to work out? Like, this is awkward. You know, like it was just not the right fit for me and I didn't do well with it. And then I actually had just, you know, this, these experiences where I felt hounded by people in network marketing. So I kind of like, broke up with the the husband that was the right fit for me and then it was like all these people were showing me that like all men were pigs right <laughs> they were like in my inbox like after I had a baby asking me if I wanted to buy like skinny wraps or like you know the hey girl message from people I didn't know at all and I was just like this is disgusting like I don't want to be like this is the most like horrible industry get a real job I was like that girl and it's funny because I actually like made this big post on my Facebook And every now and then I share it because it's hilarious. The irony is just amazing. It's like, you know, it just goes off. And it's basically like, if I ever want any of your products, I'll come to you, leave me alone. So anyway, then like six months after that post, I found the same products at a time where I just needed like a little personal self-confidence boost. I had just had my second kid. We were doing family pictures. I felt like I got you guys, I get so huge when I'm pregnant. Like, so I'm only five feet tall and I think I get five feet around. Like I am not, and I don't lose the baby weight when I nurse. Like it's, it's, it's not cute. So I was like, okay, I got to learn a contour. If we're going to have family pictures, I got to shape this face a little skinnier. I bought the makeup and we were still super poor. My husband was building his law practice. I saved like all my birthday money from family members, bought the product. And I was like, okay, I love this. And it was five and a half years ago. So Saint was just starting. And again, it was like that humility stage of life. And I had been babysitting other kids in our home to make ends meet. And I just was like, there's going to be a lot of women making money with this company. And I love this product. Like it might as well be me. And so I said, yes, a very like hypocritical, hard to swallow, swallow my pride yes. And then I, you know, I had to own, I had to own the fact that I had bashed on network marketing in its entirety not long before. So anyway, I started with the company. I was a very slow start. I, you know, people had trust issues with me and I don't know why, maybe because I (laughs) crapped all over network marketing just before. I had like a big live launch party. I invited probably like 30 friends, literally zero of them showed up. The only person at my launch party was my upline. I was ready to quit. I was just like humiliated, but I stuck it out. And I'm like, where do I even go from there? But it was a very slow build for me. I've never been a top seller. I've never been, I've never gone viral. I've never had this huge social media presence and a huge following, but I have built a very modest, but committed, loyal following over the last five years to people who really trust me and really love me and care for not only me and my business, but my family. And that has been such an incredible blessing in my life. And I am, I'm just really grateful for everything that has been brought into my life, my life the last five and a half years because of a very humble yes and humble beginnings. Oh, oh, I love your story so much. Mm-hmm. I remember even when I didn't know you that well, you did a training in some event that we did as a team where you talked about that, like that you used to be a total direct sales hater, <laughs> like how far, hater. how far you've come. And one of the best things, actually, this is something that we, that we teach and we touch on in the course, the Replicate Your Results course that Sarah and the coaching program that Sarah and I are doing 
And, and that's just owning your story, the good parts, the hard parts, the, the ugly parts, <laughs> bashing the industry, yes. or having a horrific first launch class, because honestly, that's where perseverance, which actually, um, not to necessarily bust out scripture, but it's on my heart and I think I want to do it. And I know it's in James where like that, that the struggle and the hard things that we go through that produces perseverance when you're mm-hmm. on this journey and it's not a quick journey. It's there will be people, because I remember being in the same boat with you joining around the same time that will soar past you on this race that we call network marketing. Oh, yes. and so tell us maybe a little bit more about that journey of like how you've been at different paces in this five and a half year journey, how, how that's looked differently for you, even though you've been consistently going, taking each step in faith the entire way and still to this day. Okay. So I feel like I have definitely been at very different paces in my business. And a lot of it is because I've been in very different stages of life in my business. My family has changed. My husband's business has grown. Our needs have changed. So early on in our business, I would say probably the first like three years of my business, I was working my business like a business. I, you know, was probably putting in I'd say at least 30, if not 40 hours a week, I was every nap time. And so when I, when I signed up, I had a one-year-old and four-year-old, right? Yeah. So like, how old are my kids? Maybe, yeah, something along those lines. One and four, maybe two and five, I, wherever it fell in the year. But they were little. I had little boys at home and life was chaos. Life was chaos. But anytime I had an opportunity, I was I was getting up early to work. I was working through nap times. I was working after they were down for bed at the night and my husband was home and we would be watching TV and I would have my laptop out. And I was, I was working because I intentionally had like goals and dreams and things that I wanted to accomplish. And when I very first started out, my goal and dream was $300 a month. Like that is what I had to earn to make up the difference in my husband's like budding law office practice income and what all of our our bills were. We were in the hole $300 every month after investing so much time and money into law school and it was suffocatingly horrible. And the $300 is what I needed to overcome for our family from home. And I, I wanted to do that for my husband. I wanted to support him in his his pursuit to provide for us. And I, you know, we kind of have always been maybe, I thought I would be more of like a traditional, like male provider. I'll stay home with kids. And then I got to that stage of life and was like, I kind of don't really love being home with them all the time. I need something for me too. And, and I had put my husband through law school. I had put myself through college. Like I had always been working as an adult. So it was very foreign for me to not work and not have an income. But anyway, I digress. So, um, Early on, we needed the money. We needed $300. So I set out and was like, okay, I've got to build this and I've got to build it quick. I want to be home with my kids. I don't want to be babysitting other people's kids for this $300 a month. How am I going to make this money? So it was like the personal sales. And I knew from the very beginning that that the end game, the big goal, the passive income life was from building a team. And I, I studied our comp plan day and night. I knew that thing inside out. I think Heather and I are very much the same when it comes to knowing our numbers, knowing our comp plan, knowing just the the details of how it all works. And I I knew. And I remember like I think I was in the the company for a month. I I spent a night and I had an Excel sheet and I went through every single stage, every single rank in our comp plan and I did the math. I'm like, okay, if I have everybody exactly where they are, if they were all, you know, selling the bare minimum they need for me to maintain that rank, how much money would I make a year? And I realized, like, even if I only rank once a year for seven years, in seven years, I would be making, you know, a couple hundred thousand a year. And I'm like, that's insane. It's like, you know, my husband went to, my husband did just, had just finished seven years of college and law school, and he wasn't making even a hundred thousand. And I was like, this is not a bad deal. So anyway, um, I just started working really hard to, to earn the income for our family. And then after about the third year of working really hard, the momentum caught up, the income caught up, the, my team growth really compounded. And I really saw this magic happening on my team. 
And from that point forward, I kind of was at this place where it was like, okay, I've paid my dues. I've built this business and now it's time to slowly tip the scales back and take back more time with my family, take back more time with my husband, take back more time for me and let really the the true ideal that we have of building this, like a passive income, become more passive and less something that I needed to control and push so hard for. So the past two years, I've been kind of throttling back my my work hours, my my presence in the business. I've been in more of like a maintenance mode because it's been aligned with my family and our goals. And we've been really blessed with my husband's law practices growing so much over the past five years that I've been here that the pressure is off. And now I get to enjoy my family and my husband more and let the vehicle that I've built continue to go with less for me. Oh my gosh. I feel like, don't you just wish that every single person listening, it's like, could, could like get through those really hard times that you went through. Yes. It's really like tough spots and it's still tough. I know that like, there's always going to be those tough spots, but the fact that you have started with really humble goals somewhere along the way, you caught wind of what was possible and you had that long-term vision that you were like, all right, if my husband can pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to then, you know, not even make this much over seven yeah. years, you know, I can absolutely make at least 300, like you said, because I'm sure you kind of hit that goal pretty quickly to then now here you are, it hasn't even been seven years and you're able to experience some of that freedom and what it looks like in your business. And I definitely want to reference our income disclosure because it is, yeah. uh, anytime we talk about money, well, for two reasons. One, it's important to show exactly what we're talking about. So Carly is an artist seven with our company. So when you look on the income disclosure, you can kind of see what that looks like. And again, it wasn't without a lot of hard work, heart and years of that effort for her to then get to a point where she could dial it back in terms of the pay. So keep that in mind. But also, if your company has an income disclosure like ours, What's really cool is, Carly, you didn't, you could have saved time if we'd had it at the time, which we did not. Now we do. Thank yeah. goodness. But like, you wouldn't have to do all the math. And if you're not, you're just like, mm, yeah, just like what people are making. It's not so fun. <laughs> and so, you know, it is, you'll see on any comp plan, you know, the higher the rank, which usually does equate to a larger team. And right. it's really overwhelming for someone who maybe only has a teeny or 10 teenies, or maybe they've got like a pancake leg and everybody's at different paces and places in their business listening to this. But specifically, I, I want you to, I, I would love for you to dive into the topic of social media, because obviously this podcast used to be called Scale Without Social. And you kind of touched mm-hmm. on this, that you've shifted the way that you I know you built your business more belly to belly, focused on, on you know, the more, you know, just building relationships. And some of that was online and some of that was through the social media following that you had. But share the powerful analogy that you shared on that, that training, because I think this is just pure gold for anyone who's like wrestling like you and I have been with this whole new social selling strategy that's within the direct sales mm-hmm. space. Okay, so I feel like we kind of like matured and grew up with this social selling phenomenon. So we're like old enough in network marketing that we have old school roots, but then we saw like this shift and we're like trying to catch up and play into it. So I do feel like we have like a different perspective because we've been here, you know, five plus years. But um, so I, I've never been, like I said, I don't have a huge social media following. I think I have, I've tried pretty diligently, like off and on throughout the five years, five and a half years to gain a following to, to, you know, kind of get that, you know, get that swipe up when it used used to have to have like 10,000 followers to get a swipe up. Like that was the goal, 10,000. And, you know, like I've always tried to build that following in seasons and it's never really felt right for me and it's never really worked out for me. And I, I had grown like a little bit of a following. Like I said, they're very loyal and they're really there for for me and not just for entertainment or anything, you know? So I feel like social media is like really elusive. Like we, we get really distracted by seeing, we see these anomalies, we see these unicorns, we see, you know, so-and-so that's only been in the business six months that went viral and they sold $50,000 of product, $100,000 of product, whatever it is. We see these very, very small like percentages and we think 
that we can do that too. We think, oh my gosh, all I have to do is create content, create content, create content. And we keep trying to get to that place where other people have where, where something catches. And I was pondering on just kind of this concept for a training that you, that someone on your team had invited me to come and do. And I just had this thought that it's like the way that we keep trying to go viral or create content that catches fire to become this top seller and, you know, make all this money on our own is is basically the same as like hoping to wish the lottery. And it's almost like every day, instead of going to work at our nine to five, working our business, we sit around, we scratch a lottery ticket every day. And we just hope that today's going to be the day, you know, that video is going to be the lucky winner and we're going to go viral and our, you know, our life will be so easy after that. And And I thought about how absurd it is that like in our industry, that's like a totally acceptable like path. Like that's, that's like a career path. Like it's like, yeah, do it. Like create content, like crazy, just create, 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 something's going to stick. And like anywhere else in the, in the world, we would never look at someone that is like trying to decide between like showing up for their nine to five, getting their 401k having benefits, having a set salary. If anyone else that was like in a true, like normal, normal, let's not say true, a normal like career, if they're like, you know what, I'm just going to stay home. I'm just going to buy a lottery ticket every day. Eventually I've got to win. And that's my ticket to success. We would be like, you are insane. <laughs> like that is not, that is not a business goal. That is not like a business path. Like, what are you thinking? But in our industry, we have like glorified and glamorized this lottery ticket result that we're seeing in these very few people in our company. And we think that it's accessible for everyone. So instead of people, you know, showing up for their social marketing business and having the the face-to-face parties, you know, doing the work one-on-one, the belly-to-belly, like you were saying, we're all just sitting around scratching lottery tickets and we're wondering why we're not seeing the success. And if we can get back to like the fundamentals of, you know, doing the parties, whether it's online or in person, promoting our products, creating relationships with people, instead of worrying about like creating content in social media, then three years down the road, we're going to be at the rank and the income that we see the match at. And if we just sit around scratching lottery tickets, we may or may not ever see that magic happen. Oh, oh my gosh, Carly. I mean, that analogy, I'm sure people listening are like, yes, like that just touches right to the heart of, I think, what is the root of the problem? It's not so much social media or posting about your product online or integrating your business into that. It's the fact that that's what people are hanging their hat and they're spending their time, their energy, their mental focus in that comparison mode of like, how many re- viewers did I get on my reel? How many followers do I have? Because people still are in that mindset, even yeah. though we don't need the 10,000 to share links on there anymore. Yes. And I know people like you and I who built our business without being a top seller ever. Well, not ever. It's funny when Sarah and I did our little interview, I realized we did meet when there were like 400 of us at the beginning because we were at the top in sales, but that would be nothing in the top sell these days. But yeah, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be a top enroller. You do not have to be a top seller. And I think we, where we are, we see that and we see people on our team getting burned out, frustrated because they're comparing themselves, you know to to something that's an ideal that they might not even be suited for because you and I, we're kind of achievement strategy focused. And I think sometimes, I think you and I had this conversation not too long ago where I think sometimes when you try to show up like that person who loves creating content and loves like serving others, like my, my new gal, Amy, that I've talked about on this podcast that I interviewed on YouTube, she's got a natural gift for simplifying the things that have changed her life and being able to clearly put it out there on social media. And it has served her very well. She's built a a very big following, but she's not doing it from some sort of strategy. And I think when you get a strategy Mm -hmm. achiever like us, I think sometimes people can feel, can feel that energy. And so we're much better, better suited to use that strategy and that achievement mindedness that we have in other areas to inspire people, to help show them 
the path to get to where they are. And I think that's exactly why you have excelled to the point that you have in your business is because you've leaned in to what lights you up. You've leaned into the natural strengths in your business. And I know that you and I both share the sentiment that we're no longer trying to chase after those 10K followers. And I I have to actually Mm -hmm. say on the podcast that I actually did officially delete the apps. I, I did a whole series of the five steps to take a detox from social media if you feel like you're addicted. And I realized it was time. I deleted them. <laughs> I deleted Facebook. I deleted Instagram. I'm officially done. And I feel really good about that. And I'm not saying that everybody should do that, but right. I'm saying that it doesn't have to be. And your message is so spot on. So thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yeah. I thought that I was just having, as we were talking now, is that also like, since this is a religious podcast and I can share these thoughts and feelings here. And I love that so much is, you know, all of us have God given talents and all of us have special forms of leadership or connecting with people. And I think for me, I spent so much time on this hamster wheel of like trying to listen to coaching, trying to listen to guidance from leaders and the industry telling me like, I just need to spend more time on social media. I just have to become an influencer. Like that's the way. And I don't think that's really God's path for me. And I think, you know, I, it's almost like I had been swimming upstream for so long because I was trying to force something that isn't what, what God has given me. And And it's not the way that God wants me to connect with others in the way that he wants me to influence my family, myself, and my community. And I think if we can take a moment to sit back and also analyze our relationship with social media, kind of like how you were saying, like, am I addicted to it? Does it make me feel the comparison trap? Does it, you know, if it's bringing more negativity to, oops, sorry, a little alarm went off, then positivity in your life, then, then that's probably like your indication that you need to reevaluate your, your relationship with it and your goals within your business surrounding social media. And it's okay to, to realize that your path in God's plan for you is different than someone else's. And when we stop pushing against God's plan, that is when we're going to see success in our businesses and in our lives. Oh my God. Gosh, girl, you are just oh, bringing so much gold today. And a specific scripture came to mind that has been just probably one of the most inspiring pieces of scripture in this moment. And that's Hebrews 12, 1, which says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, hello, as a network marketing leader, am I right? Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles envy, comparison, social media, the thing, trying to be who we're not, right? And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And if that doesn't speak exactly to what you were just saying, and to be honest, if that doesn't speak exactly to your journey in network marketing, as it's been in the last five years, as it will continue to be in the next five years and beyond, I don't know what does. And I just like, wow, that is so good. And I'm so thankful for you and this beautiful example that you, you've shared today, Carly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that scripture. I think it is perfect. You're going to have to send me that reference so I can pull it up later and read it again too. I love it. Oh, it, is, it is so good. Actually, I have to say my, my sweet friend, Ashley, who's a fellow podcaster, is the one that brought up that scripture because she and I were, were chatting about this kind of same topic not too long ago in our accountability group. And I just, I was so touched by it. And so it's been on my heart ever since. And when you said that, I was like, yep, that's, that's the one. So Hebrews 12, one. And for those who are listening, if you're listening to this before our replicate your results course and coaching program rolls out, actually that foundation and identity, the who you're meant to be and the, who the Lord made you to be, that is literally the first module. So we, if you're like, well, how that? How do we figure it out? That's literally the first module and something that we explore quite a bit in that. So what a beautiful way to just wrap up this incredible conversation, Carly. And I'm so thankful for your time. And where can people go to find you? I know you're not as you are on social media, but not so much, but where can they go to find you if they want to connect with you or, or just follow your journey more? It's funny because Heather probably saw me make the ugliest face just now like, oh my gosh, shocked. I don't even know where to send people because I don't really, I'm not like, in that sphere of like, come follow me, you know? So, but if you want to follow along, see a little bit of chaos of real life, see 
how we're raising our kids to hopefully be good little humans and some business sprinkled in. You can find me on Instagram at at Carly Michelle, K-A-R-L-I-M-I-C-H-E-L-E. And that's probably, I'm not really anywhere else. Well, you know what? The best part about that is if you're looking for how to do social media, the, well, I don't want to say the right way, because being an online influencer is the right way for some. It is. It absolutely is. And I, I believe that with my soul. And you and I both have great friends and, and you know, yes. colleagues yep. in this industry who absolutely exemplify that beautifully. But if you're feeling like it might not be you and you want an example of how to integrate your business, Carly does an, a beautiful job with that. So I love that you shared your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It's so good. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor and a pleasure. And I just adore you. I adore you, my friend. Thank you for every bit of your time. And I am sad that I'm, I'm supposed to be, we're supposed to be recording this in person together. And I'm sad that we have to do it on Zoom. But at the same time, I am grateful that I get to see you nonetheless. And I'm just, I love you so very much, friend. Love you. I'm so grateful for your time with me today. Feel free to check out heatherkburge.com for all the scoop on all the things. Also, I've got a huge favor. If you found any value from today's episode, would you mind leaving me a quick review? Or even better, share with a friend by clicking those three little dots at the bottom of your screen. Sending you big hugs.